The popular restaurant chain Freshy, known for its healthy menu, is coming under fire. The company replacing some of its in-store cashiers at certain Ontario restaurants with workers in Nicaragua who run the cash virtually via a video link. The virtual cashiers working for as little as $3.75 an hour. The Canadian Labour Congress among those who are criticizing what Freshy is doing, warning that it uses technology to skirt around Canada's labor laws. John Pincus is my guest. He's an employment lawyer joining us from Toronto. John, good to see you again. Your thoughts on the story? Well, this is, I think, another example of the law perhaps not keeping up with technology. Uh, we have seen some changes in the Employment Standards Act, uh, for instance, to deal with uh, work from home arrangements and telecommuting and maybe some more changes maybe on the way to deal with this. Is this legal? Strictly speaking, as far as what I can see and what's been publicly reported, um, I would say that it is legal. Uh, employment standards in Ontario only apply to either someone who's working in Ontario or who is working elsewhere, but it's a con continuation of work that's being done in Ontario, which doesn't appear to be the case here. So that means that they're not covered by uh, provincial legislation, and it's a provincially regulated industry, uh, which means that they only have to comply with the employment standards laws of that country, in this case, Nicaragua. Mm. Tell me about the ethical issues at risk here. Well, uh, you know, it's in my in my job, we don't usually advise on, on ethical issues, but I think we've we've seen that that come out. We've seen the, the public response to this, uh, where uh, you know we have these employment standards there for a reason, um, and if companies can get out of that by simply saying. Uh, we're going to go to a country where um, the wage is less, uh, and that takes away uh, work from people here, uh, then that could pose an ethical issue. On the other hand, I'm sure the companies would argue that these are jobs that we were unable to fill uh, in Ontario, and therefore it's just a function of the labour market. Canadians are used to, of course, dealing with uh, people who are overseas, and you think about call centers, for example, and I'm curious, you know, does, does the same thing you were outlining apply in those situations? In other words, you know, the laws have to follow what goes on in those countries where those call center employees are. You know, we're really actually talking about the same thing. Mm. Call centers are the perfect mm. example. That is the quintessential example. There, there's really nothing different about this except, uh, I suppose, the, you know, the, the queasiness factor um, that we are seeing from the public's reaction to this in that you are actually seeing the person uh, who, in a sense, is almost there. And the interesting thing is as technology continues to improve and becomes more realistic, it may continue to feel more and more like that person is there but earning much less. Yeah, you raise such a great point. You know, people are appear to be, you know, less concerned when it's a call center uh, necessarily than when they walk in to order something and there's this person on a screen and you kind of get this sense of, well, where are they, who are they, what are they getting paid, how are they being treated? Do you think this is a new trend, John, that we're going to start seeing? Well, we have started to see it already um, in the U.S., for example, uh, the fast food chain uh, Jack in the Box has tried this with respect to drive through orders. So whereas uh, I believe when you go to pick up the order, there is a person there, but when you give the order, the person coming out of the intercom uh, may be somewhere around the world. So we are certainly seeing this uh, start to emerge in pilot projects in the U.S. and, and now in Canada, and uh, it, may, it may continue uh, to increase. Uh, not just as a cost-cutting measure, but perhaps as a way to respond to the fact that um, it may be more difficult to hire and find people to work in these industries. There we go. Uh, thanks for this, John. It's good to see you again. I appreciate it. Likewise. John Pincus, employment lawyer.